The Lord Lieutenant, uh, Lord Mayor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, a very warm welcome to all of you uh, this morning, a fine, carefully organised spring morning with no rain. Uh, now, can the, those with seats please take seats and then um, we can uh, proceed with it. So it is my pleasure uh, to welcome you all here today to this ceremony to mark the departure of the mortal remains of King Richard III from the University of Leicester as they make their journey to their final resting place in the Cathedral Church of St. Martin, uh, Leicester. This is a key event in the history of the university and of the city and county and the university is immensely proud to have been involved in this project. It's enabled us to work in close partnership uh, with the City Council, with the County Council, with the Cathedral, with organisations such as the Richard III Society and with the local community. Uh, this has been a fine example of strong collaboration and teamwork. And it also demonstrates how our academic research has real impact and can excite the public imagination. This is an historic occasion and something I'm sure uh, we'll remember for many years to come and I'm sure an enjoyable occasion as well. And uh, now we'll hear from the, the President and Vice-Chancellor of Leicester University. Lord Lieutenant, Lord Mayor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. 30 months ago, an archaeological dig under a car park in Leicester proved to be a defining moment in history, reshaping our view of the past. It was Philippa Langley from the Looking for Richard project who originally approached the University of Leicester to conduct an archaeological search for the last Plantagenet monarch, King Richard III. She chose the University of Leicester archaeologists because of their internationally regarded expertise in the field and particularly their accumulated knowledge of the medieval city of Leicester that has accrued over many years. Subsequent to the archaeological work, a multidisciplinary team of highly skilled researchers came together to work on the identification and analysis of the remains, including academics from history, genetics, pathology, osteology, forensics and engineering. Indeed, it's a testimony to the research strengths of the university that a varied and accomplished team, all of whom are with us here today, could be assembled together. This wide range of expertise has not only confirmed the remains as, as those of Richard III, but have also established some fascinating information about the man and his life, the extent and nature of his scoliosis, his diet, and how this changed upon becoming king, his probable eye and hair colour, the nature of his death, and the injuries that he sustained, both pre- and post-mortem. It's no surprise that the university won the Queen's anniversary prize in 2013, with this project being recognised for the interdisciplinary research and expertise in history, heritage and archaeology highlighted by the discovery of King Richard III. This study is typical of the world-leading research undertaken on a daily basis at the University of Leicester, much of which is about improving people's lives and the society in which we live. Indeed, in King Richard's short reign, he had a personal commitment to scholarship and introduced a number of progressive measures which continue to impact on our daily lives. This is a philosophy which underpins the values of this university. It's proud of its record of widening participation and engaging with young people regardless of background. This has been a landmark project. It's not only brought together research teams from across the university, but it's engaged students, schools, graduates, as well as people from all over the world in a project of discovery. Academic and professional staff 
have worked with great dedication under the public gaze, and I pay tribute to them for their endeavour and professionalism. While the university has played a leading role in the science, the project as a whole has developed a strong partnership supported by Leicester City Council, the Richard III Society, Leicester Cathedral and Leicestershire County Council. This partnership approach has been fundamental to our being able to re realise today's event and indeed the events during the rest of this week. Ladies and gentlemen, King Richard III ruled for just over two years, but has been a part of our local history for over 500 years. Since his discovery at the site of the former church of the Grey Friars Priory, the University of Leicester has been custodian of his remains for longer than he actually reigned. Today, we remember him as we prepare to pass his mortal remains to the care of the Cathedral Church of St. Martin Leicester, so that they may reinter him with dignity and honour. Reflections on a Journey. The motto of the University of Leicester is Ut Vitam Habeant, that they may have life. These words from the Gospel of John would have been familiar to King Richard III. They have inspired generations of teachers and researchers here to discover new truth and to rediscover old truth. Our city, county and university now exemplifies a diverse community very different from King Richard's time. As we rejoice in the fruits of research and discovery today, we pause to reflect on the journeys which have brought us to this moment. Using the wisdom made manifest in human creativity and drawn from some of the great religious traditions of our world. Of journeys passing, we wanderers, ever seeking the lonelier way, begin no day where we have ended another day and no sunrise finds us where sunset left us. Even while the earth sleeps, we travel. We are the seeds of the tenacious plant, and it is in our ripeness and our fullness of heart that we are given to the wind and are scattered. Thus shall you think of all this fleeting world, a star at dawn, a bubble in a stream, a flash of lightning in a summer cloud, a flickering lamp, a phantom, and a dream. Time flies faster than an arrow, and life is more transient than the dew. With what skillful means or devices can we retrieve even a single day that has passed? The wanderings which are uniquely ours. <coughs> our flashes of lightning in a summer cloud. Our single days that have passed our own roads travelled, alone or made in company. Our successes achieved, our failures born. Our joys celebrated, our sorrows suffered. Our relationships treasured, our separations mourned. Our hopes fulfilled, 
our dreams disappointed, our discoveries made, and the discernment of a king. of the present moment. Look to this day, for it is life and the very breath of life. In its brief course lie all the realities of your existence, the bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. For yesterday, is only a dream, and tomorrow but a vision. But today, well lived, makes yesterday a dream of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. On this day, in this place, we are bound together in a moment of time. We are bound together in a moment of history. We are bound together in this moment as we pay our respects to a King of England.
to all please stand for a minute's silence. Of Journey's Future. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveller, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Ah, I kept the first for another day, though knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere, ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. Please sit down. We look to our futures and bring to mind all places of education and learning, especially the University of Leicester, its staff and students, its research and teaching, and for the learning and expertise which have made the present celebrations a possibility. The nation especially Her Majesty the Queen and members of the royal family, the Lord Lieutenant, the Lord Mayor, the City Mayor, City and County Councillors, the people of Leicester and Leicestershire, their many faiths and their many cultures, the members of societies and groups with a particular devotion to King Richard. Those who will be in any way part of the ceremonies and events of the coming days. Lastly, we reflect on the final journey of the mortal remains of the last Plantagenet King Richard III, a Christian monarch, leaving this place to journey via county and city to the Cathedral Church of St. Martin, Leicester. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as it was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord.
the one who sent you, has now recalled you. Return to your home now in peace and pleasure. In bliss and ecstasy, sing his glorious praises. By this celestial tune, you shall acquire your everlasting kingdom. Come back to your home, O my friend. The Lord himself has eliminated your enemies, and your misfortunes are past. Would you please stand? Be steadfast, enjoin kindness, avoid ignorance, and bear with patience whatever befalls you. May choices blessings fill your life with peace, joy, and prosperity. <clears throat>